doing some stairs and railings for my buddy and obviously they can be intimidating even for me i haven't done them in a couple of years but i like to make templates you know that's going to allow me to dial in my miters top and bottom and all my notching and things like that once i tack the templates completed onto the wall i just measure between these two points i'll take them off tack one of them to this string of skirt measure and then tack the other one and that's going to make it perfect something to consider to get your termination point here at the top is always going to be how your base cap transitions and to make it seamless i set the height so that it does something like that this will end up being piece of one by right here as opposed to the speed base so that this is a flush joint but that'll be nice for this side i actually it's three quarter but if i step that miter back i can make it miter to the half inch or so baseboard like that and then i'll rip the cap off here and i'll be able to make that transition like that you can see i messed this top cut up so i just put plus five sixteenths and that's going to be where i actually need to be for that so we have our top template we took our measurement we have our bottom template and i obviously transferred all the marks and now i'll cut everything with a skill saw even the miters once i have the skirt in obviously i go along with my stud finder and nail into each stud but for the bottom you can see we have a space there so i use my extendable level to go across all the stringers use my square and then i'm sending a screw in here to hopefully lighten up that gap everything will still be ascribed but it's been working pretty well obviously we see the gap there and you can see now that it's perfectly square so that should help me with the kicks so the rest of these stringers sit just below the five degree cut on this kick, but this one was actually flush. So I V'd it out with the multi-tools so that I could get some glue in there and it wouldn't hold it up. Might be a good move. We're going to find out, I guess. So this is what I've been doing for the kicks. I have this thin strip of oak ripped because obviously my gauges would fall into this gap, which would probably be fine, but I'd rather not. This is going to give me a better reference. Now I just lay the gauge onto my kick stock. And I'm gonna knife my marks for accuracy. Now we'll just cut our scribes on five degrees. Now we rip the top of the kick at five degrees as well. Obviously because I decided to video, it's one of my worst fitments, but that's all right. It's gonna let me show you how to fix it. So we have normal beads on the ends and that's where we'll be nailing. And we have super heavy beads in the middle because these stringers are set back. We have a bead along the stair skirt. That's why we do the five degree cut. And now we'll tuck the kick in. Since this was tight at the top, the first thing we did was pre-drill and send a big screw here. You want to make sure that you send it far enough in that you're not going to hit it with your nail coming down through. And then we have framing nails, I mean, uh, screws there so that we can see that tiny little gap. That closes it right up. We have a little gap over on the top over here. And we're going to do the same thing. Now our kick's super tight. And it's important to note that when you do these framing screws, you want to have a full like 3 16 pre-drill so you're not really stressing the stringer. And when you do these finished screws through the top at an angle, you want a full 1 8 pre-drill so that you're not going to crack anything and so that it's only pulling it into the stringer. I mean, the stay skirt. I'm moving on to the tread. Obviously, framing can be tough to work with, but I have this marked with an L, which means light or normal PL. This is an H and actually my first exclamation point because this is sitting so low, we're gonna do super heavy PL here. This will be normal and this will be normal. And this five degree back cut on the top of our kicks so we can get a nice bead of PL across here and that'll splooch back rather than forward. We're also gonna do a bead back here. We have um, a five degree back cut on our treads as well. And that should make that so that it splooches down and then we'll screw from the back of the kick into the um, tread. And so it'll only have four nails in the front and then six screws coming through the back and the PL will hold the rest. The process for the tread starts out similarly with just using our stair gauge to get our size. The first razor cut's easy, but something that's been working great to make sure I don't walk on the other side is simply just a clamp. That way I can hold it with my right hand and then deuce it. Now we'll cut our tread marks at about a degree and a half. Now after we do the second scribe cut, we're gonna change the saw to five degrees and we're actually gonna take a little off here 
not all the way to the front, but that's gonna help us tilt it in. And that's gonna look something like that. And we know that our overhang is about there, around three quarters, so we're actually gonna nip the rest of that off with the multi-tool. This is our dry fit, and you can see that even with that five degrees, it's pretty snug. And there's like a hair right there, but that's like less than the thickness of paint. So that's totally within tolerance. This side's absolutely money. So the PL should look something like that. We have it on the back half of the kick, the lower portion of the kick. And then obviously we put a ton where we need to account for the framing. We're basically wet shimming, I guess, but that should work nicely. When I drop the tread in, I'm gonna leave it off about a quarter inch. That way I can push it in and that's kind of gonna help the, uh, the glue spread out and really lock everything in. Then we take our combo square and we nail it in line with the stringers here, but into the nosing, we just keep in line with the stringers to keep the uh, nailing pattern even. And now we pre-drilled in the back and we're gonna send some screws into the tread. Moving on to the newel post, I need to figure out my baluster spacing in order to get the nice front for my newel post. So I have the same space here as I do everywhere else. We can't just arbitrarily set the newel post. So it's 10 inches from the front of the kick to the front of the kick. I have inch and a quarter balusters, two on each tread. So 10 inches minus two and a half because inch and a quarter times two balusters and then divided by two. So seven and a half divided by two gives us three and three quarters. So that's gonna be my baluster spacing. So I actually have a block here or a template, whatever. And this is four and three eighths and nine and three eighths. So that'll be the center of my balusters. And then this right here would be where a baluster landed. So to maintain the proper spacing, that will be how far I notch in to set my newel post. So this edge here will be where I notch my newel post into this tread. So to notch for my newel post, I did my usual chisel all the way around, well knife and then chisel and then multi-tool. That way my blade would never walk and it came out perfect. Then to cut my kick, I just leveled down, knifed it and multi-tooled on both sides. The reason it was so important to do this beforehand and I wasn't able to notch my tread in anticipation of the next step was because I knew that was gonna happen. And if I had just made each tread even or each reveal even on the treads, then what would have happened is we would have got up here with our level balusters and we would have been sticking over this way or we would have had some torqued balusters like that. So that's why it's, you know, a little different here, but we can't always control the framing and it is what it is. And that's how the new post looks on the tread and the kicks. And that's pretty good. So this is what I'm doing for the railings. The new posts are just floating. And I got my laser running across to make my adjustments for the uh, for the rails here. To secure the newel post, I start with a crap ton of PL Max, and I drill half inch Forstner holes in a pattern, obviously, and then I use these long lags. I pre-drill them entirely into a double two by six kick, with my depth set about a half inch deeper, just to account for the plug depth, and then I make the plugs out of the cutoff from the newel, and you can see that half inch Forstner allows the bit for these timber locks to go right in. So that's pretty convenient. To secure the rails to the blocks, I just marked the center of the back of this rail and the center of the block and put some put five screws in the back there and then did some three ace Forstner bit holes and now I'm plugging them. I would have liked to use a quarter inch Forstner bit hole and my quarter inch plug cutter, but they weren't, you know, uh, cooperating with each other. The plug cutter was slightly bigger than the force bit hole, so we went with 3 eighths, which is fine. But as you can see, because it's a finished screw, I could have used a quarter inch hole, which would have been a little bit slicker. To secure the bottom part of the rail, conveniently enough, there's just two long finished screws in there and a little bit of glue behind this, and then they get hidden by these pieces, so. Nice and toilet like. For this baluster system, we just have our marks on every one of them. We obviously use a little marking jig and then a three quarter inch force a bit into the hole. And then we double check our balusters to make sure that the holes are centered on the baluster from the factory because I've had quite a few that weren't. 
And then the biggest key here is to dial these things in first. So you can just install your balusters. Well, install this first one, install your baluster and so on. These should obviously all be the exact same size. And then you're not even thinking about it. You just know that after you install a baluster and follow up with one of these, then you can just put it in and you know it's gonna be perfectly level. Well, plumb for you uh, sticklers. But yeah, it's a pretty, pretty pragmatic system, obviously. Gets a lot of glue and it's coming out nice. The other thing I like to make sure of is even though this edge is going to get covered, I want to keep these ballasts nice and tight with my cuts so that I can put some glue in there and it's actually going to do something. I mean, you could be as short as, you know, an eighth or three sixteen shy, but we don't want to do that. We want to get some glue up there. So the house was full when I was doing the string, uh, the mitered string of skirts on the first day. So obviously these stairs are done, but we're going to pretend they're not done. And I'm going to show you how to do mitered string of skirts. I start with my angle finder here obviously this is fairly archaic a lot of guys are going to use a digital level and stuff like that but start with this angle finder here and that's going to give us the angle for the bottom of our stringer skirt let's pretend that the bottom of our stringer skirt is cut we're going to take a jig like this we're going to tuck it up against our kicks like so depending on how much the framing is off sometimes you're going to split the difference here but if you can plumb it then that obviously works out well now you can see that we have a mark there and well, now you can see that and that's going to represent the outside of our miter so because when we miter this as well it's actually going to take some off right here when we go to do our flat cut you're gonna to wanna to sit this piece around 9 16 maybe 5 8 above the point of your stringers. This is an example of an application as to why I recommend having both right and left hand orientation skill saws because now I can use my right hand orientation skill saw for my right side stringer skirt. I'm gonna use this angle finder to match the mark that we made with our jig. And then we're gonna use that as a saw guide to make our miter cut. And we're gonna leave the line because obviously you don't wanna be short. And if you're a little long, that's okay. From one side to another, we're obviously gonna run a straight edge and we're gonna set the entire kick on that straight edge. So if you're a little heavy, that's all right. For setting the string of skirts, let's pretend there's no kick and rise here. I measured up three and a quarter from the tip of the kick on each side and snapped a line and that worked very well on both sides that three and a quarter number came from me anticipating wanting this seamless transition with the base cap here as well as on this side and normally this would almost be an impossible angle but i was able to get a little piece to do the 45 right there which worked out very well so these are all the jigs that we use for this project as well as the angle finder and the extendable levels were super clutch. As you can see, it's kind of archaic that I'm using all these jigs, but these come in super handy. It's just a couple pieces of MDF. You do one side, you make all your cuts, and then you can do the other side with the same piece of MDF. Just make sure that you bring in like a 32 inch piece, ripped it, you know, say 11 and a quarter or 10 and a half or something like that. Almost forgot to mention the stair gauges. They are an extremely important piece to this puzzle. So definitely get yourself a set of these if you plan on doing something like this. So I know all the jigs and stuff are kind of old school. Like it might seem crazy to use a skill saw for all your string of skirt miters and your stair tread returns, but it's doable and it's fairly efficient. You know, you're not fighting with anything and it worked out really well. Everything looks great. They're super happy. So a quick overview of some obstacles to overcome. This wall was actually three eighths back from this wall. So when I put this piece of base in, I actually have a sliver back here scribed to the wall. And that was to make it so that this didn't look too bad and it was a little more even. And then the major obstacle was this wall is about a half inch out of plumb from where the railing was gonna land. So I checked where my railing was gonna land long before I did my newel posts but you can see how much of a difference that made. We have about a quarter inch sliver on this side and about an inch over here. So these little things, they can really compound down the line. So if you can, if you have control over it, I would try to make things as even and level as possible. 
Another more major obstacle that we ran into was the first two newel posts that we bought had some manufacturing defects that didn't show up until they were installed. I was wondering why the cap, well caps actually looked super torqued, and that was because the reveals here were off by about a strong sixteenth on both caps, and the cuts here weren't perfectly square. So. The, the reveals being off and the cuts here being off exaggerated the issue even more. And so we had to return those new posts and get some new ones. A more minor obstacle was that the center hole on all the balusters, or not all of them, but some of the balusters was actually a little bit off. So obviously when I went to put it in, you could see that it was in the wrong position. And you just want to keep an eye on silly stuff like that, even from the manufacturer. This all took 40 to 42 hours with some obvious delays being having to return the newel posts and you know work around some of these problem areas. But I would say just take your time. Even just the kick and the tread combos took between 35 and 45 minutes each just to do one kick and tread described into the sides with all our screws, glues, and nails. So that's all there is to it. Hopefully this takes some of the intimidation out of it. You know, I did a lot with a skill saw if you're not comfortable with that, then, you know, I, I don't know, but it works out well for me. And as you can see, we have all very tight joints. Everything looks one piece, nice and seamless. We got our nice cuts around the newel posts. You're not gonna find any gaps there. Absolutely none on either of them. You know, it's, uh, it's not easy. And it's fairly risky to be doing that with a multi-tool and a chisel and a knife. But like I said, if I had tried to anticipate exactly where these newel posts were going and cut those with a miter saw and a jigsaw or anything like that, then I would have landed off in this line. So I just knew I wasn't going to be able to do that first. And everything came out nice. You know, it's, it's super tight. I'm very happy with it. I know a lot of people are going to say that it's, a fairly basic install, but do the simple things right. That's all it is.